Okay, kit review time. Today we've actually got the classic airframe. This is the Bristol Blenheim Mark 1 or Mark 1F. Certainly a different kit this one. It says on the front here, available only from Hannans. Hannans are one of the big distributors here in the UK. So I don't know quite where you'd get it anywhere else uh, apart from them. Funnily enough, this did, kit did come from them in the first place. As you can see, beautiful box art on the front, quick run round. So we've got, you know, a kit containing small parts, 148 scale, made in the Czech Republic as all the, the classic stuff is. And your kit number is kit number 4155. Okay, just like that. There's a beautiful box art on this one. Really do love this one. Okay, we're no strangers um, to classic airframes. They've built some of the quite legendary kits over the years. As you can see, beautiful box art. This is the very early Blenheim. All right, so in here we have our standard type of thing. Now, with all the classic airframe stuff, you, you treat them like a limited run kit, okay? Because technically that's what they are. They're not making thousands of kits and the usual ways of doing it. So some of the parts can be quite clunky. Reviews other people's like uh, Pacific Coast models do them as well. Um, and you sort of forgive some of the, the clunkiness, shall we say, uh, for some more of the extra bits you get. And this is the part we're talking about because just down in here, it's all in one giant bag, which I don't particularly like to see, but okay. In here, as you can see, you've got a lot of parts, uh, a lot of photo etch, you've got other photo etch bits here. Um, sorry, I don't about photo etch, but certainly resin parts and all the rest of it. This is where you get away from thinking, well, it's quite a clunky kit because you've got a lot of detail, which is all gonna be your sort of aftermarket parts, which we'll look at very, very shortly. Let me just move that over there. So, starting off in the old instruction booklet, as you can imagine, again, it might look a little bit crude if you've never seen any of their kits before, but it does do everything you need. So usual thing, we've got the parts call outs, uh, all the bits in here. Some of the parts that aren't gonna be used, obviously you've got crosses through them for other variants that are coming out, but it will talk you through about, you know, obviously drilling out holes, what needs to be changed, where you're gonna have the actual uh, resin parts and things like that going in there, okay? So as you can imagine, there isn't much to it going on the, on the inside uh, for the main fuselage, but then you've got the front section going on and then the glass bits going in. Two halves of glass, we'll see exactly how nice and clear those are. Then we've got the turret going in at the top, okay, and then obviously positioning those in, putting them to the front. As you can see, not too much, but when you take into account here, you've got a resin engine in here to take place, and you've got to put in all the exhaust stacks and everything else like that. It is going to be a little bit complex. Okay, the gear going through, as you can imagine, again, small and fiddly, I think we'll be calling this one. Okay, um, down here on step 11, pretty straightforward. You've got those wheel wells going in, and then you've got the actual system of the two halves of the wings going together. Uh, it does say here, note, align the rear bulkhead of the wheels with the rear opening of the bottom of the wings. Pay special attention to aligning the wheel well uh, so that the landing gear mounts are parallel with the inboard lower wing surface, i.e. make sure it's seated correctly once it's in there, okay? Then it's just a simple case of the old engine nauticals which we've already put putting in the front. Tailplane's going on. Uh, the gear going together and everything else. So as you said, we've got resin and bits in there so we'll have a look at. Some more of this smaller little detail. So we've got little lumps and bumps, engine scoops, things like that, uh, which are gonna be going in, which are made of resin. So we're assuming the detail is a little bit better. We've got what Blenheim's quite famous for is the, the way that the wheel um, doors, uh, wheel well doors covers are actually attached to the front gear and sort of hang through it as well. Very reminiscent modern day A10. Uh, and then those are going on, the exhaust stack's going through. Um, tail on and then you've got mounting of the 303 guns and then you've got the guns for the belly uh, which you obviously this is the fighter version versus the uh, light bomber version uh, and then obviously the guns going in at the top not a lot to it on the old instructions especially when you realize how much resin you have got we've got a color call out here for the parts so it's your standard sort of you know ref night color uh, which is the dark earth dark green and with a black underside not blue because it looks blue in this uh, and everything else and then the same on the other side for the various markings you've got there the decals themselves whilst we're here if we can get them out without destroying it because thanks to our rob this is his kit who we kindly allowed us to review for us Okay, decals actually beautifully painted. Good solid color. I don't know if the color's correct. I don't know, I thought it'd be, it, it looks more brown than red. Um, as I say, different cameras, different angles. Try on the other camera. 
um, as you can see, but it's solid. It's properly silkscreen printed. It's not like a printer which has got lines running through it. It looks very nice. Good solid color on all of those, so no problem at all. And quite closely cut as well for the actual markings, so it's nice. But no uh, actual tracing paper to protect them or soak up any moisture. A little bit odd, so what I will do is I will save everything and we'll get that sealed down before we go. Okay, so moving into the parts, we'll leave the resin and the clear parts to afterwards. So let's just start down in here. Immediately you look at it, you can probably see the shininess of this, especially up here. Um, yes, it is literally that shininess, but what you have got is very fine recessed power lining. In fact, so fine, it's almost too fine because I think you wouldn't be hard to get rid of that to actually sand and paint over it. All right, but generally, as you can see, you've got a little bit of flash. Yeah, we'll get rid of the nasties first. First of all, because it's a limited run kit or a short run kit, you're not going to get locating tabs, things like that, for putting it together. Sometimes that's not a bad thing because occasionally they don't line up anyway and it makes fitting harder than it would be as if you just had a blank canvas. So certainly you can put your own little tabs in to make things line up a lot easier, but you haven't got any of those. Generally, it's not too bad at all, but sometimes they can be a little bit rough on the inside. You've got a little bit of flash on this guy just down on here. You might want to remove that one first and this one so you get a nice meat as they go together. But generally, as you can see, you've got some nice ribbing details showing through here on the tail. Uh, making your way through and hopefully you can see different details pop out but as I said the engraving is very very fine okay I don't think there's anything problem with that but again you know you're probably looking down here and you can see you know there isn't a slot though there isn't they just butt in so sometimes it can be make aligning the wings a little bit tricky but again it's part of the course for these types of kits okay so you've actually got here we've got the tops of the wings here again you can see this detail which is very very fine it's very nice no problem with any of this okay a little bit of flash on it but as i said we we accept all of those things all right but generally not too bad at all it's just when you run your finger over some of them feel raised some of them feel recessed like this front one here actually i think is raised but the back half recessed not too sure about that uh, but generally very very nice i don't know how well the camera can pick out some of the details I'm using the other monitor at the moment, but hopefully you can see nice details going on all that. The HO engine themselves, quite nice. Again, a little bit flashy. Um, there's a little mold marks running through them as well. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to take care of that. I think it's gonna stand out. Just a little bit of flash, usual things, but not too bad on the inside. Again, you wanna clear off these ejector pin marks, things like that to make sure we're all good. But, um, the crudeness you can sort of be forgiven in a moment so don't read too much into the flash and being horrible that's why i'm not going to knock this kit because it is a limited run kit okay you can probably see or i don't know how well you can actually see you might see there's like a dried residue as well all over these surfaces this is one of those things um i had a gentleman email me the other day and he said i noticed you never wash any of your kits i think modern day kits you don't need to it's not like the old days where you'd have literally in the bag you would see this one hasn't got it, but you'd actually get residue in the bottom of the bag. That's from where the mold is sprayed um, and then obviously the injection to make them come out the mold easier. This is what this has got on it and you can actually see it and it's dried onto the wing. So the chances are this is one of those kits. As we were saying, modern kits, you don't really have to. It's very rare you see it. This one I would, this wing's even worse, um, but as you can probably see it down there. You get that sort of residue. There's like a line of it. I think if you try to paint over that, it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare. It's gonna react. Generally, all of these smaller parts, as you can see, all a little bit flashy in that. But again, we'll forgive that because the next bits are really, really good. So, after you've looked at your kit and you thought, really, I've just paid X amount for it, isn't, you know, what you get? This is what you get. This is all the resin stuff. Now, the only thing I hate about it is the way it's all chucked into one bag. So you've got bits knocking against bits. So never throw away the bag, never throw away any small parts you've got. This is what it's all about at the end of the day. This here, as you can probably see, what I'll do is I'm just gonna drop the cameras in both of them just a little bit. So down here, as you can probably see, we've got some very nice detail on these areas, just like this, okay? Really, really nice stuff, okay? Very thinly molded. In fact, you could, if I hold this up to the light, I can see straight through it, it's that thin, okay? But this is what we're talking about here. So good detail for the cockpit walls. 
We've got the instrument panel just down here. Again, some very nice detail on that. And looking around, you've got the actual bezels at the back as well from the instruments hanging through. So you could, a little bit of wiring on there. The seat, very nicely done. So we've got molded harnesses um, and you've got molded the actual seat cushion as well. Looks like it's been used. It's actually dented in all of this, which is a very nice touch. Sorry about the nail color there. You can tell I was painting yesterday. <coughs> And then what you've actually got here is, uh, this thing is the rear bulkhead. I don't think you're gonna have to take that plug out because you're not gonna see it, but I'm pretty sure the seat goes against this. Um, and it's just gonna be like that. But again, you've got nice, you can actually see, and uh, hopefully you can see, you've got the details of the riveting each side of these sprues. So very nicely done. The engines themselves, as you can see, again, a little bit flashy. You know, you might wanna get in there with a very sharp knife and just trim those up. But again, the level of detail, is very very good on these it's not a you know a sort of shake and bake chuck it together they have been thought about so we've got two of those uh, the wells take that out as we can see we've got fully detailed wells with all the framing this is what they were talking about making sure you line up properly otherwise you're gonna have problems fitting them in but again it's so thin I can see daylight through the bottom of them in fact if you hold them up to the light you can see all transparencies it's very very thin Okay, you can actually see it's come through slightly, got little holes just there, it's that fine a detail. So you've got two of those. Okay, this is the um, uh, the actual belly gun plate for the four guns that go where the bomb bay would be. Now you're going to have to probably trim up all of this block underneath and sand it down. Just remember your health and safety. A couple of little, uh, you know, hot details on the side here. So you've got some little bits, they're very crudely done. You might want to improve on those just a little bit, but generally it's not bad. We've got here one, I'm hoping there's another one. <clears throat> Sorry Matt, I can only find one. There might be another one in a minute, but um, I'm assuming this is the actual prop uh, front as well, okay. No, it can't be. Surely there must be another one in here. It's either that or one missing. Oh, sorry, different color resin. That's why I didn't see it. So this is your actual, uh, the spinners, if you like, for the props attaching. Two coolers. Uh, one for each engine again nice touch there and we've got some more little details uh, sometimes you can look at one and this one here is not as nicely done as this one uh, but you know again pretty good stuff that's all very nice down in here as well i'm not going to bother getting these out because you can see them quite clearly but this is the exhausts coming off the engines in resin okay we won't get them out very delicate i presume it's part of the undercarriage just down there all right, so I'm even going to put the flashy bits in because hell, you never know. So we're just going to pop these in here. But what I'd like to see is them against the piece of foam to stop them knocking around. Luckily, these ones, all these parts aren't too bad, but sometimes they can take a hit. Especially when you get large lumps like these in there. All right, just because I want to keep this safe. Checking the mat as well to make sure we've got nothing left over. All right, then we've got the next bag which I think this is undercarriage things, guns, more exhausts. So down here you can see this is a lot more of this finer detail. So we've got some formers there. Uh, looks like we've got uh, magazines for the guns and the drum. Okay, for the actual, the different types of guns. Okay, and again, seating. We've actually got the guns themselves, I do believe these are, all part of the undercarriage. Uh, another part just down there. As you can see, very nicely done. Exhausts, we saw those a moment ago. We've got the actual guns themselves, which I think you might want to run along for some, perhaps some aftermarket metal ones might work better in there, but they're okay. Okay, seats, uh, for the actual seating system, the way it fits into the framework, everything else like that, again, nicely done. Okay, and then some more smaller parts, again, ridiculously thin some of them you can see straight through them I know the camera doesn't pick it up exactly well that's a mirror some more little formers down like that as you can see very nicely done okay there's your browning 50 cal it's a little bit bent but it's not too bad I've seen a lot worse okay right the way down to there I think we've got rudder pedals you've got the control yoke uh, and some more looks like a little table down in there as well so that's very nice um, and you've got another gun here as well, which is 
beautifully done very very fine I say this is what we're talking about here these small broken parts I assume that's a bit of something so we'll keep that over there I haven't seen anything broken off but you never know okay and there's another little bit of former as well just down in there so I'll just slide them out of the way a moment <clears throat> last up we've got the clear parts okay so tend to be a little bit hit me so they're either very very good or they're awful and this is one of those where initially I looked at it and thought it's awful but what it is you actually got these parts here quite cloudy the actual bits that count the windows are actually very very clear because it's all on an angle you can't really see but if I place my finger in there as you can see we don't have a lot of distortion for these windows when you're actually in the window area itself so I don't think that's too much of a problem and I think it will really will make a nice kit. The um, dorsal turret as well doesn't look too bad. A little bit different, but obviously because of the thickness and the way it's moulded, um, it makes it a little bit tricky. So there we go. That is the classic airframe uh, Bristol Blenheim. As I said, don't get excited over the kit because you never do. What you do get excited about, though, is the level of detail that you add to that actual part. And let's face it, I think the detail is in the right parts. By actually having them in you know obviously taking the time it's quite a lot of glass at the front you know um, so you can do a lot of work in that some detail there you've got the engines there's quite big openings on the front of these engines so again it's nice to spend a little bit of time there so really you're not worried about the other areas too much anyway so as i said great kit a little bit flashy probably not for the beginner if you're not haven't done resin work before especially and you're not too up on you know your kits at the moment you might want to steer clear of this one to be honest if your skills are up there and you're up for a challenge then it's definitely a great kit to go for <laughs>